that we are getting some questions in the chat. Excellent. So, hi, St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, how do you know you haven't surveyed the same spot? Excellent question. So, as we are um, conducting these dives, we are we have a very complex logging system, data logging, making sure that we're tracking each and every single part of all these dives. Um, so this unnamed okay. seamount that we are currently So now we're in a good a position at, for me to put that wrap back in. This was actually okay. first mapped by EV Nautilus on so August 18, so 2023. Yeah, that's so perfect. <laughs> very, very recently. Yesterday, uh, yeah. So I think uh, you stay, you're still spinning for some reason. Can you take auto head off and then put it back on? There you go. Okay. And then uh, bring your heading back to 270. Okay. So in just a moment, I can tell you a little bit more about mapping and how these uh, seamounts are selected in order to uh, in order to conduct these dives. Or if anybody else wants to jump on on, on that one, feel free to do so. Great. Yeah, so this, this um, northwest quadrant of Johnston is probably one of the most poorly explored areas within the area around Johnston Atoll and within the EEZ, uh, exclusive economic zone, in part because there is a really low density of seamounts up here, even though there are a few large ones, like the one we mapped last night was the single largest unmapped seamount uh, that, remain, that remained unmapped until yesterday in uh, Johnson Atoll, and so we did get a chance to do a couple passes on it today, and uh, select a dive site, and it's actually a really interesting flat top seamount that okay. uh, has some really unique possible failures or, or um, mass wasting events in either in both the northeast and the southwest corners of the, uh, the seamount. But lots of potential dive sites here. It's a large feature. It's about 60 kilometers long. Um, kind of dumb, uh, dumbbell-shaped uh, summit. Cool. And these uh, seamounts in this area are really important for trying to understand uh, okay. uh, retracing uh, hot spots and other uh, sources of volcanism. Uh, there are uh, a range of ages up in the mid-Pacific Mountains area and down yeah. Uh, near Johnston yeah. uh, Itthill and Line Islands, uh, so so this area is kind of just a, an unident unidentified data gap that we can use to kind of uh, throw in some ages and see where where they fit uh, with best predicted models. All right, thank you, Steve and Nick, for contributing to that. Does my mic sound low to anybody, or can you hear me okay? <coughs> I hear you well. All right. Awesome. I am still waking up, so <laughs> I do feel like I am a little bit on the quiet side, but I'll, I'll try to project more. Use my big girl voice. <laughs> yeah. So Kat wants to know, how long will it take to cover the entire ocean if we were to map it? A very long time. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was on the order of hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. <laughs> of continuous mapping. Are yeah. you all up for the challenge? Okay. We'll have to think about it. But uh, there was a report put out recently, I think, um, that, that indicated that half of the U.S. Uh, EEZ has been mapped so far. And so only half to go. It's only taken us uh, a few hundred years to get to this point. Yeah. Yeah. I love the optimism, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so somebody is wondering, what does a wrap in the tether mean? Uh, that's a great question. So when we're conducting these dives, we are using two ROVs. We are using uh, ROV Hercules as well as Atalanta. So Hercules is the main ROV that we're using. That's um, how you're able to see Channel 1 and 
as I'm now, that's just Channel One. Um, but when you're seeing that main camera and doing, uh, seeing the collections happening and things like that, you're seeing that from the standpoint of ROV Hercules. Yeah, that looks great. Like much better than it. Yeah. And then above Hercules is Atalanta. You can see that in Channel Two. The view from Atalanta looking down on Hercules, and they are tethered by a 30 meter tether. And then Atalanta is connected to the ship uh, by much, much, much longer. So about 2,000 meters probably at this point. Um, so uh, lots of tethering going on. If any of those tethers get twisted up or um, wrapped in any way, that yeah. would be a very large issue. So we just want to make sure that all of our tethers are uh, nice and happy. So that's what we were trying to work on a few, mo a few moments ago. And breaking news, tethers are happy, tethers or are happy. RV is happy enough with the tethers, as they are. Breaking news. Thanks. And by tethers, I mean tether. Um, <laughs> so science, uh, would we like to continue up towards waypoint two? Copy. Great. We'll get moving then. Bridge nav. Morning, uh, five zero meters, two eight zero, please. Two eight zero. So if anybody online is curious to kind of follow along and tracking the depth and the temperature changes and all of those things, um, that information is available. If you go to the, uh, the front page of the website, nautiluslive.org, you'll see a strip on the right-hand side where it says technology. At the bottom of that strip, you can click where it says more data, and that should take you to a window that gives you live data. So the current depth that Hercules is at is 2,602.1 meters. And the temperature is 1.7 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty consistent with what we've been seeing for the most part during these dives. Um, yeah, I, we, we could, but I, would, I, I, I think it's yeah too low density. Yeah, I would wait for something more substantial, yeah. Pretty moderate up here too, so there here. may be other opportunities. Sure, awesome. sure. Yeah. Like oh. here, what's that? Still in a slopey area. Mm. Yeah, we're right here. Uh, when do this things start to seem? This way, the way we're going. <laughs> <laughs> So again, we are uh, mainly okay. looking around the Johnston Atoll region of uh, this area. <laughs> and um, as Steve mentioned before, we are kind of way, way out there in a very remote part of this, um, this region. And somebody online was wondering, uh, they know the history of Johnston Atoll. It was used uh, for military um, events in the past. Have we ever found any evidence of military um, action down here in the depths before? Um, we did a dive last year at Johnston Atoll uh, proper uh, on, the, on the margins of the island. Um, and I would say you know, not, nothing 
nothing too scary, but a lot of debris, a lot of um, you, know, uh, you know waste, trash, you know buckets and you know uh, canisters and things like that. Um, but I wouldn't say that yeah, there's there's anything particularly noteworthy that we saw um, that would be something toxic or you know dangerous. But if you want to find out more about that, I would refer you to uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife has some pretty good details um, about Johnson Atoll and, and uh, the use of the atoll now as a bird sanctuary. Is there a dominant species there or just a... Uh... Birds? Yep. I don't know. They're kind of... Um, what's the word? I don't know. I can't remember what the word is. Subaerial. Oh, no. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it. No. <laughs> Birds are also aerial. <laughs> Super aerial. And at times, submarine. They, true. They're all over well, the place. Once you put that, take it out of the box, you can't, you yeah, can't put can't. that <laughs> word back in the box again. It's, uh, <laughs> it's live now. <laughs> it's happening. What, what was actually the word you were looking for? <laughs> no, that, I, that was it. I just didn't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, told I, know, I was on the, I was the, on the board and they were like, I am playing it? a chess match here from <laughs> 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 He's like, I already told you guys. And he's humble, too. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> it's too early for a smoke science camp. <laughs> is, it, is it ever? He could be smug right now, and we wouldn't even know. <laughs> oh, he's smug. <laughs> Can confirm. <laughs> Deck frog looks ambivalent this morning. Mm. Checks out. <laughs> I missed what you said, Gabby. What was that? <laughs> um, it's very scientific. Um, deck frog looks ambivalent this morning. Brittany, are you familiar with deck frog? No, I was like, am I hallucinating right now? <laughs> <laughs> what did she just say to me? Deck frog is deck the frog. face on the back deck created by the two fenders between the A-frame oh, and the... Oh, deck frog. Oh, deck frog, yeah. yeah. I know deck frog. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Brittany knows deck frog. <laughs> Usually... Deck frog is smiling, but today they seem a bit ambivalent. Oh no! <laughs> it's fine. It's 4 a.m. It's yeah, an early morning. It's lunch. really relatable. Yeah. We're an early. Yeah, I'm early also ambivalent right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like there's a lot of bioturbation on the seafloor, but we're not. Are the uh, yeah I'm not creators the bio? Yeah. Part of yeah. It, though. This should be a, a temporary uh, kind of transition zone. Should be headed up slope again soon. There is something coming up though, like a depression oh, yeah. in the sediment. I can see it in the triclops. You can see it in the in the upper right, Steve. Uh, kind of looks like a little cinder cone. No, it's no. no, it's straight out. Oh, it's in the triclops. There it is. Oh, the pile Top of rocks. The screen. Yeah. Potential rocks. Pile of something. I'm just going to keep these uh, moves moving, unless there's any reason that we're going to stop. Sounds good. No, Great. that sounds good. Bridge nav. We can add another five zero meters to two eight zero. Can we zoom here and yeah. see what's what's that Go for zoom. all about? Pile of rocks. Pile of rocks. Okay. Thanks, video.
Not really seeing any uh, patterns, ripple patterns, or any type of structure here yeah, either. Just kind of a laid out mass of sediment. The amount of gravel has kind of uh, increased, though, slightly over the past 50 meters, but I still think it's very, very low density for a scoop. What we were seeing last year sure. that we were classifying as nuggets or nodules was much more <laughs> regular and much more dense. <laughs> Interesting. This I would, it's more just like a debris field, a well sorted debris field, or maybe poorly sorted, I guess. Yeah. Start to see some on the triclops. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> You can hear Logan laughing. It's because he's listening to Sam. Oh, go up, SPL, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sam and uh, Gabby are having a funny conversation up front, but they're off cam or off microphone right now. It's mostly just nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> nonsense can be funny. Yeah. Yeah, it can. <laughs> Bio leave, madam. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, rocks. Oh, oh look. Oh, and biology. Oh, look. What do we have yeah, here? There's a floaty. Yeah. What is oh, that? What is that? Is that a shrimp? Shrimp Sharing. with a bag? Some prey. It's a shopping <laughs> bag. <laughs> it's a shrimp on like a glider. It has something at, uh, that like it's Like one eating. of those James Bond Navy SEAL like yeah, propulsion glider things? That, yeah. That's <laughs> I, I was looking it's for the fast. right word. It's, it's a real fast. Form, I think. What? Yeah, so it's a pred predation event. Ooh. Okay. Um, go ahead. What was it predating on? I was I was thinking it looked like a worm, but ah. it could have been some other planktonic uh, biological organism. You know, very specific, but it's the best I can do for you. <laughs> Probably not a shopping bag, though. Any chance we can zoom on the bottom side of that rock? Yeah. That white splotch. It looks similar to something that the last watch had slurped just at the transition. Go for zoom. Steve, did that urchin, did you end up getting that urchin? It was beautiful. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And it was just super stuck in the yeah. slurp pose? Okay. Uh, what is that? Can we zoom tight on that? Is that a scallop? It looks like the same thing we, we slurped uh, last time. Oh, yeah, can we stop and maybe sample? Yeah. Uh, mm. yeah. Okay, is this gonna be a slurp? Yeah, there's actually two things there and I wanted to take a look at both of them because okay. this one looks a little bit case, better. I think I'll stop the ship. Bridge now. And there's some rocks there too that looks really nice and angular. We have a bunch of layback, mm -hmm. so we'll do this as Maybe a we'll do another rock. We'll be on the move the whole time. It's up okay. to you. They're loose though. The Atalanta will see. be on the move the whole time. But it does look like a little bit of a, of a pile here. Tell us. First thing is, I, I just want to look at a good look at that thing that we were looking at before. Oh, yeah, I had the same problem. Uh, sorry, uh, Steve, can you say that again? I just want to get a good look at this area that we were okay. looking at before. Another really tight zoom, best you can do. Yeah, we slurped some of this um, 
semicircular material uh, just at the watch change and I don't think I'm gonna don't think I'm gonna do it again but this one looks a little bit fresher it, although there's two of them aren't they scallops maybe maybe not and that's what we're trying to figure out so do you want a sample of these and with a slurp yeah I think we should go for it I'm, okay. I'm I'm more interested in the one on the left first. Okay, go okay. wide. And then we'll see how that works out. And if, because I think the one, the one that we slurped at the watch change might have been dead. I think this might be um, more lively. Sorry. Oh, that. Need to sit down. I'll give you a little more space to work with too. I thought you were just going to fly the slurp pose onto I the organism. That, is, that <laughs> is a method. That would have been impressive to that me. That is definitely so. a technique. <laughs> it's good for like mid-water sampling when when you only have one armor operator. Very dramatic, too. Yeah, it's very cool. Do you want me to follow you in? Thanks. All right, let's see. A bit of uh, so which uh, which jar are we in? Um, I can take three. the here. Okay, I'm going to do a quick flush here. Okay. Let me know if you want any uh, zoom, too, Karen. Okay, thank you, Logan. Yep. The last one we sampled looked like just shell material. Uh, it was not cohesive. So I'm curious. Um, okay, let me know when you want to. If this is any different. Any time is good, thanks. Okay. So we're going Starting for at 30%. the right. one on the A left. A little bit of zoom, please. First. Awesome, thanks. No more s slurpage. Uh, That's 50%. Uh, <laughs> it looks like the one on the right might be a little big for the slurp pose. Yeah, if we can get just aim for the one on the left. If it doesn't come up after a few seconds. Uh, oh, there it yeah. is. Okay, yeah, so it is a bivalve. And this one definitely was live. I saw that move. The last one did not look very alive when we sampled it at the watch change. It's holding on for dear life. Seriously. There, there. excellent, thank you. Right. That's great. So it's uh, some sort of bivalve, uh, I think. Yes. It could, it could be a... Um, uh, could be something else, but let's go with bivalve. Okay, tentative. so we've got that one. Any other interesting things here? No, do you want to take a rock? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're going to take a rock on the left-hand side. <laughs> okay. That's they're, a lot of They're very though. angular. <laughs> um, is that too big, do you think? I think that's perfect, yeah. It's a nice little triangular piece that of cake. Very angular. It. Piece of cake? Piece of cake. You are bringing up some very delicious-looking rocks, I must say. Yeah. <laughs> God, they didn't bring any snacks to get. <laughs> <laughs> Pillow basalt, cake rock. Cake uh, rock. It's like uh, some sediment frosting. <laughs> <laughs> this is a you know biobox <laughs> four ball science term. How many days until ice cream? <laughs> oh, uh, T minus. Yeah. Right, what one, is today? One day. One. One. T minus one already. Tomorrow's oh. ice cream day. Uh, Data, is this going Ask in starboard bio? Yes. One of the smaller ones. Yeah, I think it'll fit just fine in there. So just catching up with some uh, questions in the chat. What degree do you need to have to get the job you have? Um, excellent question. So here on the EV Nautilus, I love how diverse this team is. Um, again, I am a science communication fellow. So I'm visiting from uh, the California Science Center and other UD. science communication fellows are visiting from elsewhere. So there's one who's from Philadelphia and she is a science illustrator. There is another one from Kentucky and she is a teacher. So kind of from all over the place, but 
one thing that we absolutely all share is uh, passion and mm -hmm. desire to learn more and explore and get curious oh, and get dirty, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, so I happen to have my degree in aquatic biology, my bachelor's of science degree. But uh, we also have lots and lots of other okay. positions um, on board where you don't necessarily need to have uh, don't necessarily need to have a degree in order to work on this ship or a, a science degree. And uh, what box is this going in? Um, one of the forward on the starboard side, port side, the smaller ones. One smaller of the forward one boxes. Side. Yep, that's good. What sample is that, Brown? 114. No, sorry, 116. Thank you. Ah. Uh, what was 115? The bivalve. The bivalve. And what was 114? The rock. It the was other, a rock at the, the beginning other, of the yeah, shift. the other rock. Okay. Super. Super. All right. Let's keep on marching. Uh, there was a rock at the beginning of the shift. Uh, our shift? Yeah, just gonna okay. collected it at uh, around hmm. uh, 1404 USD. Yeah. In classic fashion, we immediately got a rock. <laughs> <laughs> right away. Yeah. Samantha, I think that you actually have a really unique story about how you ended up on the ship. Would you mind telling uh, people what degree you originally sure. got? Sure. Let me um, get the ship moving again, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then happy to. So science, anything else here? Are we ready to go? Cool. ROV, you want to get? Well, we're gonna have a few minutes to, uh, for, until the ship moves. So okay to put in a move. Perfect. Bridge now. Uh, five zero meters, two eight zero, please. Uh, yeah, happy to answer that question, Brittany. Um, I started out as a science communication fellow. Um, after many years working at Monterey Bay Aquarium, doing public programs and uh, working on a science sailboat that the aquarium used to have. Uh, and then was communications manager for OET, the non Ocean Exploration Trust, the nonprofit that operates Nautilus, um, and kind of learned uh, the navigator role on the job, um, as well as other roles on the ship. Um, and now I'm the operations coordinator for the nonprofit, but my uh, degree is in political science. So um, as, as you mentioned earlier, there's a lot of different paths to, uh, to being out here and to, uh, you know, gaining experience on the job or, um, or as others on the ship have kind of specialized, have done specialized programs, either um, technical schools or uh, I just you know, undergrad or, or graduate degree programs uh, in their field. So it is a great learning environment um, to learn from all the different people who, who've gotten here in different Two ways. Two. Is that a holothurian there, bottom left? Yep. Actually on sediment. It's been a while since we saw one. Thanks so much for that answer, Samantha. It was great. So, um, science, I think we're missing a, um, a target for that first rock collection. Um, uh, I'm yeah. thinking it was here. Are you talking about the first collection uh, of our? Of our watch, NA114. Uh, sure. I'll just uh, I, I recorded a depth around 2660. If that helps. You don't have that long? I case? don't, know. Okay. It, it would be at the same exact spot as when they took that, um, uh, what's it called, that, that, uh, potential calcareous, bivalve? yeah, potential bivalve at the beginning of the watch. Oh, same spot. Same spot as that, yeah. Great, I will drop another target there, thanks. That one didn't look very alive, though. It, it broke up pretty easily, mm -hmm. um, and they barely touched it with the uh, slow pose, so. It's probably just the remnants of a one of the valves or shells. 
Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and next question is, do you sleep on the boat? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Depends. <laughs> I mean, technically, yes, but um, yeah, so we are in the middle of the uh, Pacific. We're exploring the central Pacific uh, region. Yeah, so we are all staying on the ship 24-7. Uh, we got on, uh, most of us, it was July 31st, and we are going back to Honolulu um, uh, the 29th, August Yeah, next 29th. Saturday. Oh, so soon. No, lead, no later than next Saturday, yeah. Okay, two more ice creams. Two we'll more be ice creams. We'll be headed back. That's better than one more ice cream. Yeah. True. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're, all of us are staying on the ship. I believe that we have about 50 people um, on board. So again, a really large team, as well as the crew who runs the ship. Um, yeah, so we have bunks, we have beds, we have everything that you would need in order to live happily. Uh, so, yep, we all sleep on the ship. Unless we're doing muster drills. Yes. Unless we're doing what? Yes. Uh, muster drills. Drills. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Last night we had a late one. It was a lot of fun. All right, I'm just gonna situate it after we use it again. There's some boulders coming up I can see in the distance with some sponges for sure on them. Oh, that's what that is. Ghostly. <laughs> the silhouette. Ghost, ghost, we're gonna call this the ghost cam or the ghost cam. You can <laughs> see the shadows of yeah. things in the distance. The abyss. What is the fish I on like the left? That. The fish here. Oh yeah, there's a fish. Hello, fish. I feel like this fish is sleepy too. This is a benefica. Benefica. Very sleek. It's a very yeah, a very skinny fish. I don't think we've seen one of these yet, on at least on this watch. Yeah, there there was one on the first dive. Um, I was looking through the the photos. So this is Venefica netostomatidae. Guessing it's a uh, one of the yeah. Is there an urchin right there? One of the eels. Oh yeah, oh Spidodiatomatid. Yeah. yeah. Mm, it's Very nice uh, cooperative eel. Yeah, they love their camera time. It's a beautiful shot. It's your moment. <laughs> I like that eel. It had a very cute face. An interesting isolated boulder. What's the story here? city in the sand. Now, Farad's, Farad's bunges on top in the foreground and Polyopagon in the background. Mm. The Farad looks very similar to one of the turbochargers we sampled earlier in the cruise. Yep. Maybe a little bit different, but there's a lot of different diversity in the Farades. Yeah. Th this is more. This is more what Rob was looking for, but I'm still gonna hold off on. Oh, that's a really interesting texture. On uh, on this sponge here, it's almost like popcorn. Yeah, so maybe up to three species of sponges just on this one rock. And the shrimp.
Uh, what's, what's on top? Can we tilt up a little bit? There's an animal that's living right there on top of the rock. I have no idea. Amazing. I think there's at least three shrimp on this rock that I've seen. It is shrimp rock. They have claimed it. I really like One, two, boulder. Three. Yeah, boulders like these. So do I. Yeah. <laughs> because they, oh. well, at least the ones that I'm used to, the larger the thing is, the more stable it is, usually, and the more likely you are to get larger things attached to it. Yep. It's, it's got a very interesting uh, articulated body. I think it's a baby sea cucumber from here. No way. Like, <laughs> super baby. Uh, like... Can't oh my gosh. Yeah, that's full zoom there. That's right, yeah, I would say it's a sea cucumber. Like, a couple centimeters. Oh. Super tiny, okay. Wow. Just a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, little one. I guess this rock isn't so isolated after all. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, um, yeah, no worries. I, I spent a lot of time during my master's thesis studying drop stones that are yeah. associated with uh, ice yeah. melt. And the, I, I kind of had the same feel, same inclination that these kind of remind me of drop stones that are just randomly Is placed boulders and, and large sediment fields. At high latitudes, you can, they can be 100% covered by biology because everything sure. else is soft, right? Sure. Oh, yeah, what, what is, is this that? jelly thingy? Wow. Oh, yeah, that's weird. It's cool. So it definitely seems like we're seeing a lot more life at this site, at least, um, than we were seeing on our previous dive. Steve, do you have any idea why that might be? More life here? Um, no, I thought uh, on the last dive, we were diving a little bit deeper, but I, I think there was actually more life there. Uh, oh, more some, some more tube anemones on the, this stalk right here. I can see them in the triclops cam pretty well. Mm. What were you looking at in triclops, Steve? Uh, this stalk, the top of it. We're seeing some of the tube anemones that we saw yesterday, the ones that pulled in when we uh, okay. zoomed in. I'm flying in on the triclops a little bit. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I, I think actually think on the previous dive at deeper depths, we were seeing more stuff, uh, particularly deeper than 3,000 meters, and then it kind of um, didn't see as much for a bit, and then it started to uh, uh, see more abundance of animals as we got shallower on the seamount. But at this site, we're seeing a lot different animals. So we're not seeing as much coral and maybe you know sponge diversity and abundance. Sponges are still present, but not in the the, the sizes that we saw previously. But we're also seeing a lot of a lot more um, individual organisms like uh, the scallop we saw, the bivalve, uh, sea cucumbers, and uh, uh, shrimps, uh, what else, jellyfish. So you mentioned yeah. drop stones earlier. Um, yeah, can we go back to that? Yeah, yeah quick explanation on what a <laughs> drop stone is. Uh, glaciers, uh, glaciers will uh, often carve out the rock as they're advancing towards the sea. Um, and before they calve off, uh, into icebergs, they'll often retain uh, those rocks on the bottom of the ice sheet. And as the icebergs float into the ocean and eventually end up melting, they'll 
release the rock. Uh, they're called drop stones, and you might find these in both oceanic settings and uh, what it, sub aerial settings, I think they are. Uh, <laughs> continental <laughs> settings. I just uh, approve of that. <laughs> but uh, not not at lower <laughs> latitudes, usually, right? Usually no. you'll find those uh, uh, in much higher latitudes. Yeah. Way to work it in, in, in Nick. In the, yeah, in it, the it just came, I, I was actually going for the drop stones. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> okay. Sometimes the word <laughs> needs to be said. It was like a two out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> the, effort, the effort. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was naturally there. It was a natural. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't, wasn't pulling for it. We'll use. take it the average of the. Uh, <laughs> I don't five believe. Five out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a six. <laughs> So what do we think is going on here with uh, the rock placement? Not a lot. Great. Just <laughs> rolling off of yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, we saw some ripples at the earlier in the shift, uh, which is basically just a function of grain size and flow velocity. Um, not seeing too much of, of any type of structure associated with this. It's just kind of like flat and flat uh, sediment, pelagic sediment, and uh, some of that ferromanganese gravel or maybe nuggets looks about the similar size similar size nuggets that uh, we collected on on our last dive um, I'm not sure I don't think it's worth collecting quite yet I want to hold off on on that I still think it's pretty yeah pretty poorly sorted um, mm -hmm. you get a better sort when you get you know larger boulders when you get sure. scouring sure it doesn't, doesn't look natural. Well, it's natural, but it doesn't look like a natural uh, weather. Yeah. All of all of this plan was intended, of course, um, because you know, we want to kind of skirt along one of these ridges, just off the ridge. It was requested by some of our scientists ashore to better explore the, the periphery of the ridges, just Go ridge systems. Um, oh, nice! What have we here? Cycropodes. Cycropodes longicauda has that long, long fin on the back there. That one we can identify the species pretty well. Oh yeah, you can see the fin pretty well in the Cyclops cam. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, Ugh, I want to hold it. <laughs> Scoop it up and just. They're pretty gelatinous. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So I know that sea hares are able to ink. Are any sea cucumbers able to do that? Uh, nope. Nope. They just spit out their guts when they feel like they're being uh, being threatened. Yeah, I've never seen that happen with the deep sea specimens, but um, Go for zoom. usually their their body just dissociates because the the temperature gets too warm. Uh, sometimes they, you know, their proteins denature and then they just kind of disintegrate. Hmm. Okay, go away. It's a good microcosm of sorting where you have currents that might be sorting pebbles and sediment. Is there any interest in a push core in this region? Um, maybe, but let's go a little bit more. Roger. I've been thinking about that too, but maybe waiting for closer to where we have a rise. Hello, Anouk from the Netherlands. I hope I'm saying your name right. Thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy your coffee. About how long does it take the ship to do a 50 meter move? I'm curious. Uh, let me track the next one and I'll let you know. We budgeted about 200, uh, a little bit over 200 meters an hour seafloor coverage. We'll finish the dive track or an, a an average speed of 0.13 knots. Okay. Um, a little bit more relaxed pace than the previous dive. But we can move briskly across this uh, yeah. also if we need to. Okay. Yeah, I think 200 meters 
stuff an hour is definitely doable. Uh, the ship's going 0 0.3 knots. Super. So our viewers have noticed that most, if not, actually, yeah, most of the fish that we see down here um, kind of have like an eel-like shape to their bodies, and they're wondering why is that? It's a very energy efficient body plan in the deep sea, particularly when food resources are limited. Um, if you're more streamlined, you don't need to um, have large musculature, uh, which is energetically demanding. Um, in addition, when you're trying to station keep, um, you know, having a nice streamlined body will allow you to hold your position or even drift um, more efficiently. Makes sense to me. Yeah, so having kind of more of a ribbon, ribbon-shaped body. A uh, whole. What yeah. is this? Is that something there? Looks gelatinous. I could be seeing things. Go for zoom. Oh yeah. Mm. You are seeing things. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Yeah. Uh. Whoa. Can I get closer? That's very different looking. Sort of stocked with the stock attached to the sand. I don't know. I want to look at it though. And then I think it's a sea cucumber, but it's very oh. wavy. A sea cucumber? Yeah, can we? Now it kind of does look like. Uh, do we have time to do a tight zoom on it? To do a tight zoom? Yeah. Uh, go wide, please. I, I can't even put that into a phylum right now. Yeah, that was, yeah that was a good really find. It blends it's right very, in. Yeah, very wavy. Almost looked like a tuna kit, but then it, yeah. as it started to. Yeah, um, that's my other thought. But as it started to move, it didn't have that like rigid form of a tuna kit. But a holothurian is an interesting idea. I, I have no idea what that is. Go for zoom. Exciting times. <laughs> <laughs> it has stumped Steve. Ship's about to stop too. If we want more time here. What is huh. that? Yeah. Well, you know what this means. What does it mean? We have to collect it. Okay. Sorry. Well, you think you can slurp it? Uh, we can try. Uh, let's get cracking on that. Absolutely. Go what? Interesting. If it is a holothurian, that is quite an impressive that, sail. That is a very, yeah, very u unique morphology for a holothurian. It's ne definitely not in the NOAA guide, and that could be really important. So, for the slurp, we could go to four. Slip jar four? Yep. I'm posing this question to our science ashore to see if uh, any ideas. Cool. Yeah, it looks like a sea cucumber mixed with a jelly, mixed with a anemone. Yeah, the missing of. link. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? No. Uh, let me know when you're ready for slip. I'm ready. Not to make any okay. guesses or anything, but. <laughs> Not to speak hyperbolically, but this no. is probably it's yeah. big. We might need, we might need more. You heard it here first. <laughs> wow, what? Oh. Yep. Okay, uh, maybe uh, forward box, or I think it's going to oh, go in okay. then. Oh. oh, all right, there it goes. Oh, there it goes. Well, that's that's very um, that's an interesting data point. Interesting. And. One seventeen. Okay. It's one, one, nice, nice we, ha we have you. we have thoughts of mollusk from our scientists ashore. Huh. Pelagic maybe. In um, <laughs> lambda or is it omega? in there? Oh wait, no. Yep. Okay. Yeah, great. Cool. All right. Well, that's really interesting. We're going to want to preserve um, some tissue in uh, ethanol and probably formalin uh, 
the bulk of the specimen so we can harden it up a little bit. Uh, but we'll save a little bit of tissue for sequencing. Do we want to classify as potential tunicate then? Or cucumber? Or unknown? I honestly have no idea. I, I don't even thing. know where to go with it. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Steve's back here having a existential crisis. <laughs> Who am I? Everything I studied was a <laughs> lie. <laughs> oh. Well, there are some really interesting uh, guides to the abyssal fauna that just got published. Um, uh, so we'll take a look through those. Maybe it's something abyssal. Even though we're not really abyssal, we're lower bathial at this point. You get these overlapping zones, you know, 25 to 3,500 meters where you have... Uh, very widely distributed species, bathymetrically and geographically. Yeah, yeah so that was... You see another one? Wait a second. Mm -hmm. And nope. Mm, Bungie. <laughs> So I guess that's what I meant a few minutes ago when I said, oh, it seems like we're seeing more life down here. Um, definitely seeing different types of life than we were at the uh, other site. So like Steve said before, um, you know, more isolated, I guess, individuals. Um, so the sea cucumbers, the shrimp, the, we haven't seen any sea stars yet, but fish, you know. Um, and somebody was wondering about cold water versus warm water is it more typical to see uh, fish in warm versus warm see more fish in warm water or more fish in cold water um it's not really a temperature thing it's more of a productivity question um, higher latitudes tend to be more productive uh in terms of you know higher um higher energy availability you know, in the form of food from um, plankton. Uh, so you tend to have you know, more productive, for example, fisheries at higher latitudes or areas where you have upwelling of nutrients that fuels primary pr productivity. Uh, even along the equator, um, I think you get some of the most interesting biodiversity because there is uh, an energy uh, associated with equatorial upwelling uh, that's produced in the plankton that is exported to the benthos. So it sinks, sinks down to the seafloor and fuels those food webs. Some of our viewers are wondering, how deep is camera one? So the current depth is 2,592 meters. And again, we are seeing camera one uh, from our ROV Hercules. So that is about 8,503 feet. Let's just keep the, the ship moving through this part. Roger, we're moving. Or it's 1.6 miles below. So that one always, I feel like for me, has the most impact, like hearing it in terms of miles, it's really, really far down. And Steve, do we have an idea of what the pressure might be at this depth, the PSI? PSI, I'm not sure. I, I think it's usually easier to work in atmospheres. Okay. So every uh, 10, 10 meters is one atmosphere, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that would be, uh, where's our depth readout? Yeah. 259 times. 
surface pressure. So extreme amounts of the yeah the, and the yeah, semi camel. Oh, nice eye. Very neat. Yeah, he's, this is more of like the you do see these weird things um, in the sediments that you don't see on the rock, and it doesn't mean that it's any less biodiverse. It just means that it's different. And you know, we see things like sea pens uh, also. That uh, sea pen species on this dive that we haven't seen on others. Hey, it's Saturday, everyone. <laughs> what are you doing this weekend? <laughs> <What's that? laughs> Waiting for ice cream day? Waiting What's for tomorrow? Weekend? I can't wait until the samples come up, honestly. <laughs> we want to see that thing. Yeah, that yeah, one's really I cool. Know. Really yeah, everyone in the chat is wondering about that, too. Who gets first crack at identifying that sample? We're on track to recover around four, right? Is there a chance it is like a jellyfish thing that might be stinging? Like, are we concerned it, in our sample process? It has process? Some, some really solid viscera because it was providing some resistance to the hose. It's a nice way to put that. <laughs> what? It's a nice way to put getting oh. stuck at the hose. Yeah. It's providing some resistance providing to the hose. Providing resistance yeah. <laughs> with its solid viscera. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I was surprised by that. But if it is a hollow in that kind of... I think we can rule out tunicate. Yeah. So it's either mollusk or... <laughs> sounds like a game game I show. Mollusk or sea cucumber. Mollusk or sea cucumber. Yeah, with a big sail. And this one's in the pom-pom yeah. family. Pom-pom. Mm. The underwater dandelion family. Yeah, I like that. Oh. Dandelion. Make a wish. Also Cute. known as... Go the Rosella same? day, I guess. Colophagus. Bridge now. We can add another move to add another five zero move to two nine zero. Eventually, I guess we're going to go perpendicular up slope. Um, we don't have to go okay, kind of in this gentle arc, so maybe after this next move, we'll kind of move more north. How does that sound? Now, uh, or you're thinking moving up towards waypoint two more yeah. directly? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. We we may zigzag, so like go up north through two, and then west, you know, along the contour. We along the contour. Yeah. Okay. There's no. There's no. You know absolute need to go diagonal, diagonally between two and three. Okay. We Along have this enough contour? time built into the schedule. Along this contour or a different contour? Uh, the con I was thinking the contour between um, where waypoint three is. So at four, four contour lines up from two. Oh, mm -hmm. Roger. Yep. Okay, so go all the way up and then over. Roger. Samantha, the thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That joke can only be made once a week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, interesting. Ah, oh, this is so cool. Go for zoom. Oases of life. Yeah. Oh, there's a there's a dandelion just below. Not that the fly trap and enemy is not really cool, but I know dandelions are a fan favorite. Oh, there. Yeah, I almost like wrote dandelion in the it. chat. This is benthic siphonophore? The dandelion? Yep. Oh, is it dandelion siphonophore? Oh, I love those. Just below. Okay. <laughs> we have to look again. So we had to rebrand it for Definitely you. Definitely <laughs> a favorite. The flytrap and enemy looks to be on a sponge stalk or some you know, structure. A lot of sponges in this area. It looks a very like nice something dandelion. Go for zoom. Looks like something from Mario World. 
Yeah, go for it. Uh, in farther? These are great. They're like suspended Super with fine. all these little strands. Kind of like a... Um, it it kind of oh, reminds me of... Uh, okay, go away. It's a great zoom. It is a great what are those critter. Things, uh, Definitely one of my faves. The balloons they used in the First World War to, um, like, uh, sighting, uh, sighting artillery and things. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that one. I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, yeah, just having flashbacks to Dunkirk. The movie. World. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Your personal flashbacks for whatever one. Yeah. <laughs> Seen some good movies Doing lately. Some, uh, yeah. some processing back here. Um, I'm also doing some processing about that organism that is as of yet unidentified. It, it also reminded me of Melibi nudibranchs, uh, Melibi leonina, that have uh, a big hood. Can I be looking all the way down with the Adelantis camera? Those are, uh, Check out the tunnel and see if it's got that lazy loop in it. Yeah. Intertidal and subtidal California. So. Come down. But yeah, yeah so it did seem if there was like the tentacled hood, and then there was the. It did seem nudibranchy. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, it's, it, we just don't know at this point. viewers have noticed that you are the watch leader and they're wondering what does okay. the watch leader do i've been wondering that myself uh, yes, I know. <laughs> no, I'm we all did it <laughs> no uh so the watch the lead in the is uh responsible for carrying out the dive plan to the best of the ability of um, the watch and fine. making sure that we have consistent uh, application of so our dive objectives watch, uh, among the different watches. Cool. Thank you. It just so happens that um, Rob and I, we both write the dive plan. Um, and so um, for the most part, we're just kind of enacting what the um, what we have received input on from our cruise plan, which is also um, has input from our scientists ashore community. So not everyone can be out here participating 24 seven, either in the chat or on the ship. And so we're trying to both accomplish the goals and motivations of our scientific community, as well as um, kind of the, the, the specific re uh, exploration objectives for the site that might make it unique uh, and, and not necessarily these loftier general objectives uh, for the region. So for example, uh, you know, exploration of a, of a, a ridge or a s specific feature within a seamount uh, that might not have been apparent on um, seafloor bathymetry before we had mapped it. So trying to pick out the pieces that are most uh, important sorry, to okay. the exploration community. But we're also trying to make sure that we keep good track of what's been sampled so far across the watches, um, making sure we don't double collect if we don't need to, uh, sustaining and keeping box space, You know, making sure we don't collect too many samples in one watch or too few samples so that we can properly uh, characterize the site across the entire depth range. We are also responsible for testing humor, okay. um, <laughs> you know, trial balloons. Trial balloons. Sounds like a lot to juggle. Yeah, three, three, especially zero. the last part. Copy. <laughs> <laughs> Is there another jelly? No, that's a shrimp. I think you can bring your head around to three three zero. Yeah, looks like a bit more hard substrate on sonar in this direction.
Yes, our RV, we're going to go. Um, you can just start to see the slope come in on Atalanta there, I think. Atalanta. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. So we're going to head towards the slope, okay. try to get above waypoint two here, and then travel along the contour along okay. the slope to waypoint three. Is there a place online to view the photographs of the retrieved samples? That's a great question. I believe um, some of them will be available on nautiluslive.org, but I'm sure that Steve has a plethora of other resources where you might be able to see those photos. Yeah, for I don't know if... Um, so I, I would refer uh, any viewers who are interested in that to our repositories um, that are associated with different collections. I'm not sure if MGSL has photos where you can see the rocks in the collections on uh, on their website, but I know that MCZ does. If you go to MCZ base um, at the Museum of Comparative Zoology's website, you, you can search for collections by ship or by collector, and if you type in Nautilus, you can usually find photos associated with those um, those vouchers. Nice uh, glass sponge, genus Semperella, often associated with these nugget communities. Small one here. But we almost exclusively find this genus okay, on kind of the soft, rubbly substrate uh, or sedimented substrate. fish uh, on the right hand side coming up you can see uh, it in the Vera? I can see it in the triclops cam it's on the right hand side it's coming up uh, out of out of the screen on the right oh yeah I got gotcha. you higher up in the water column Uncooperative this morning, yeah. right? I know, <laughs> Not having it. Here, fish, fish, fish. <laughs> <laughs> Got him in triclops. Yeah, triclops yeah. is good. Okay, let's let's move on. <laughs> I'm getting way nice off track. Nice photo here. with that triclops, though. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go wide. Oh, there's another fish. Ooh, this looks different. Oh, interesting. Oh yeah, I haven't seen many of these this expedition. Go zoom. They're usually what very abundant. Anyone have a guess? Lizard fish? <laughs> no. Yeah. Isn't that what it's called? The halosaur, the salt the lizard. Halosaur, thank yeah. you. Oh, halosaur. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Salt oh. lizard. Okay, go away. So there's two genera there. Um, Aldrovandia and halosaurus, which are most common. And uh, the difference is basically some patchy scales on its head uh, differentiates the two genera, usually. Steve, were you on the cruise where almost every time we saw fish, it was a cuscule and a halosaur together? No. Oh, like a dynamic duo it sort was of really like interesting. sidekick yeah. superhero situation? Multiple sightings yeah. um, on different dives, and they were always paired up. It was really odd, and it was just one of each. Like next to each other. Near each other, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's possible. Um, you know, there's there's a phenomena called uh, 
social foraging in shallow waters where mixed assemblages of fishes might um, team up basically to exploit you know food resources that um, that you know might be caused by the feeding mode of one uh, or another so for example goatfish uh, oh is this an acorn worm uh, go for zoom I think it's a sea cucumber actually it might be it's curled up no oh. sea cucumber wow you could just see all up or in there a cycropoded yeah with a long tail sail right. sail tail sail tail okay go away You can come up a bit. Okay. Go for zoom. Nice. Corella morferian, probably. Okay. Similar to anemones. Corellomorphians typically have uh, broader oral surfaces, oral discs, and knobby tentacles. So that was not an anemone. No, it, uh, it, it it based on kind of my field identification clues, um, Corellomorphians uh, are usually just as common as anemones in, in the deepest parts of the ocean. And usually they have knobby or tentacle tentacles, uh, which are loaded with, nem with nematocysts, and they're closely related to anemones, um, but not quite anemones. Amazing. You could have fooled me. That was very anemone looking. Go for zoom. The thing is that, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, detailed you know, differences in biodiversity, particularly when, oh yeah, what is this thing? Looks like it has legs. Oh. Okay, go tighter. Oh, no, it's just a patch of sediment. <laughs> False alarm. It did look like a tardigrade oh, okay. or something. You got, you saw what you needed to see here. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Nick, you're awfully quiet there. What do you feel about this lack of rocks? <laughs> um, very uninspiring. <laughs> <laughs> very uninspiring. Too Look much life. Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> there's not much we can do with sediment, um, unfortunately. Sediment uh, has weathered and broken down rocks, uh, those that aren't carbonate. And um, any, any you know, type of um, age constraints we would get from a sediment uh, would record the time of um, of the original rock being formed and not the time of the deposition of the uh, sediment. And we don't really know where, you know, any of that sediment originally formed. So as far as making age determinations, it's uh, relatively useless um, outside of um, um, determining magnetic lineations to, uh, to better understand uh, time frames. So we could use it for that purpose, but not to, not for absolute uh, ages. There's a barnacle on this side. <laughs> we right do have side. some sediment, Nick, even though you're not excited about it in one of our jars. So. They do have some sediment. Um, <laughs> really, the <don't> top <laughs> Yeah. I was more excited about the mudstone that we collected. Um, yeah. Go for zoom. Why are you excited about the mudstone? Because there are some nice little uh, crystals in there. Oh, there's a carnivorous sponge. Is that the one I held yesterday? On the top of the rock. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. How do you Is know it's carnivorous? Here? Yeah, that's the barnacle. And if you just okay. kind of pan to the left or float left, okay. so there's there a carnivorous tunicate there. Okay. And then if you pan left more on top of the rock, there's a carnivorous sponge. Oh, cool. That we haven't seen yet. Carnivorous sponge? Mm. Where is it? And I just saw it on the other camera. Uh, hold there for a second. It was very, very small. Oh, oh to the right of the lasers. Yep, there it Next is. Next to the yeah. schmutz on the rock. I have no, oh, oh my god. Little gosh, white, so too small. thick with the yeah, yeah, yeah. blob on top of the cocktail onion. Okay, go in tighter. 
Good eye, Steve. I can't believe you saw that. Oh. That's amazing. Oh, in the in the triclops, you saw it, hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. The it's, fearsome. I told you, it's my it's my secret pair of eyes. <laughs> it was Steve's eye view. Or I guess Steve's eye view. Secret Squeeze eye. Okay, secret go ahead. Yeah. So, okay. how did we know it's um, carnivorous? Um, is it belongs to the um, uh, the uh, family Clatterizidae. Clatterizidae. Uh, family, yeah. Clatterizidae. Um, they're not glass sponges, so they're, they look like glass sponges. Um, but this one looks more like uh, the fan shaped morph. I think it's called Abyssocladia. In fact, there's a really good photo of it and a, and a species tentative ID. Um, on the animal ID guide here, Episocladia. Science, we're finishing a move here. Is there interest in a push car here, or wait till we get to the ridge? Uh, I think let's keep going. Okay. Bridge nav. We can add another five zero meters to three three zero. Someone in the chat is wondering, have we ever found any treasure or valuables? All the biology and rocks we collect yeah. are so valuable. Yeah. All of them. We have looked at a bunch of shipwrecks. Oh, it's a nice, um, this, is a, this, is a, this is a coral. It's not a sea pan that's blown over? Um, Weird. No, it's small. It, huh. I think okay. it could be a Cophobolemnon sea pen. So wow. they have very small stalks and very large polyps. So that's what it looks like to me. We saw some on the previous dive, and uh, they've been collected here previously. We've got a very nice Cophobolemnon too on NA-149 in Kingman and Palmyra. So, as Gabby said, we have um, explored a few sea wrecks, or excuse me, shipwrecks. Uh, not on this cruise, on previous ones. Uh, I don't know if there were any treasure or valuables that were found in those uh, shipwrecks, though. I think we were just purely exploring. Um, there's definitely been some like archaeological type treasures found, like um, when this group started out, they were working a lot in the Black Sea and the Mediterranean, looking at like 1,500 to 2,000 year old shipwrecks that would carry like cargo of amphora with like um, what would have been really valuable trade goods, you yeah. know, 1,500 to 2,000 years ago. Really, really cool. Interesting with this big boulder, you can see a little bit of ferromanganese uh, debris kind of covering, surrounding the outside of it, um, almost indicative of uh, erosion as opposed to uh, formation of those soon. small nuggets. All right, nice boulder. <laughs> 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 this one doesn't have as much stuff on it. Yeah. Shrimp. 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 Okay, go on. It is supposed to slope. Supposed to pick up a little bit, so we should have some more verbosity and terrain coming up. Although I remember doing a, an ultra deep dive too um, last year at, was it last year? Yeah, 137 um, in the southern part of Kingman and Palmyra and we dove to very deep and 
the best part of that dive was as soon as we got on bottom, there was a boulder covered with the most species that we had seen in one place on that entire dive. So you never know when you're going to come across a boulder that's just the you know, really high diversity community. surprised about the amount of sediment we've seen so far. About the what? About the amount of sediment. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think I think Rob, when the, um, we were talking about this dive track, uh, suggested that you know that these kind of channels might have more uniform uh, nodule beds, and it seems like they're this year we're not seeing that as much as we did last year. Last year, we would often see nodule beds that were several hundred meters wow. uh, yeah, long, but it's it's very patchy here. And you saw you saw that pattern at multiple seamount sites. Yeah, interesting. So, if any of our online viewers are just now tuning in, hello and welcome to the SPL Science Party Line. We're definitely partying over here, taking a look at some uh, really awesome, uh, at least I like the biology. I like the things that move. So we're fencing a lot of fish and... <laughs> oh, that hurts um, so bad. I, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. Go for Zoom. Um, sponges are nice too. Like this is a cool sponge. It does not give me the heebie-jeebies, so... <laughs> but you like rocks more than corals, Rocks are... Right? They're, I'm slowly being won <laughs> over by rocks. There's a tinafore on that colony too. That red splotch is a it's a benthic tinafore that uh, has very long tentacles, kind of like fishing lures. It's called um, Tealfiella. Huh. Well, Brittany, you did a great job of cutting the rocks. The last splotch saw one at the end of you're the last dive as well. Thank okay, you. Go yeah, but I'm the over genus here. of this sponge is called Semperella, and uh, we sampled it on the first or second dive glass sponge. Very nice. In the Pheronomatidae family, the same as Polyopagon. Bridge, Nav. Let's add another five zero meters, three three zero. So just like our previous dives, we are exploring the biological and geological makeup of this unnamed seamount. So we are in a very remote part of the EEZ and the northwestern limit surrounding the Johnston Atoll region. And our current depth is 2,574 meters. And the current temperature is 1.7 degrees Celsius. I was going to say 1.7 meters. That's not a that's not a temperature. <laughs> 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 um, so this is the four to eight crew. Uh, what time is it? 5:35. So you still got some time with us. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those in the chat. We would love to hear from you. And we'll do our best to stay on top of it and get those questions and comments addressed. A little bit rockier here. Hey. Do we want to do a, a rock collection or wait a little bit? Maybe wait a little bit. Um, okay find a little bit higher density. Shrimp. Shrimp. <laughs> Bronwyn, are you still actually doing the shrimp count? I, I was, yeah. yes. <laughs> There's another one. The shrimp count will never die. Long live the shrimp. Long live the shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Sponge on the side there. Uh -oh. 
Uh, Steve, is the is the convex side the inlet for flow or the concave side? Yeah, I I don't know. I'm not certain for these uh, polyapagon sponges. I think it's Go away. the the in current is on the uh, the down slope side, so okay. it's like closest to us. So that means the yeah the concave side would be the inlet. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So almost like a net, like it's going in the the curved part and out the well. The, I guess both sides are curved. Never mind. Forget it. I give up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, it, there has been. Uh, you can use a couple different types of tools to determine that. Um, one of them uh, would be something like. Um, fluorescein dye, which you could put oh, yeah. in, in an injector, injector like a syringe, and um, squeeze it into the colony. And very slowly, you should start to see like green fluorescent dye uh, percolate through the sponge. I have seen that before. Oh. It's really, really cool. We have some down in the lab, but we don't often use it. I think we're going to start coming up a little bit faster now. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely starting to get to that slope. Somebody's wondering, are there any nudibranch or sea slugs or flatworms seen at this depth? Um, uh, yes, and yes, and yes. <laughs> uh, we saw some flatworms the other day, um, polyclads. Uh, they're basically big, giant, what they look like footprints with you know, radiated... Uh, Innards, uh, we've seen those quite often. They're very difficult to sample, so we often don't collect them uh, because they just get chewed up. What was the other thing? Nudibranchs and something else? Nudibranchs, flat worms, um, or sea slugs. Yeah, nudibranchs. Yeah, we see them from time to time, but we're a little deep. Uh, doesn't mean we don't see them. It's just they're they're very selective in their habitat. Rock looks very weird over here. Is that something on it? Mm. On the left side of that boulder. Go for zoom. Looks like a sponge, hey? Oh, yeah. That is a weird sponge. It reminds me of like turkey tail mushrooms. Yeah, totally. Ridges. Okay, go away. And uh, bryozoan up top as well. Hmm. Is this sheet flow covered in sediment? What we just kind of I think so. Through? Yeah, a few meters back there, we saw a, a different layer of the sheet flow, but um, we're still seeing a significant amount of sediment on top of this new layer. Someone on the chat is saying they saw lots and lots of really unusual, I guess, uh, sea slugs on the last watch. So it just seems like in general, this this oh, spot, this... They, um, might, they might mean uh, sea cucumbers. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Those are unusual. They look, they look <laughs> like slugs, but they're they do. totally unrelated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So science, mm -hmm. uh, we've got about eight meters left on this move, um, and we'd like to uh, reduce the, the layback before we start up the slope, so now would be a great time to uh, do a push core, do rock collection, um, whatever sounds good in about seven meters. There's, yeah. On the other side of this little channel, there's more rock. Yeah, up to the left. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, past the uh, sediment bed here. Uh, where did you want to go for rock collection? Uh, I think there's okay. something over there a little bit. Kind of look 
like we saw an outcropping on the triclops. Mm. It's possible to grab a rock over here. We're, we're over here? <laughs> okay. In this very region. the size of these rocks here. I knew it. I was looking at that one too. It's a little flat on top. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see a squat lobster. Yep. Squat it's, it's, lobster. it's very, very, Tally very up. hard to get to. Um, okay, where are we looking? Um, the ship has stopped. Is there any way okay. you can zoom down a little bit? Um, there's, there's this rock right down here on the bottom of the screen, right here. That's fine. Okay, sounds good. Okay, is that the one you want? Yeah. Great. It's good. This front one. Oh. Hydraulics look good. Cool. It's loose. Uh, it doesn't feel that way, no. I saw it rocking a little bit. I think this is looser. Oh, there you center. Starboard box. Oh. Uh, oh. Yep. Kind of so it's just. Um, is it kind uh, of falling apart on you? Crumbly. Uh, yeah. yeah. Can we wait for the dust to clear and. Yeah, I'll just freeze and then. Are you using Grip Force 9? <laughs> Grip Force 9. <laughs> Herc Smash. It does yeah. look a little crumbly, huh? Yeah. I don't know. Yep. Oh, yep. Yeah, it's there you go. Hard. We will pass on that rock. Okay. okay. I'm going to pick up and move ahead. Sure. Still more <laughs> shake, it we'll shake, shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Get that rock out of here. Walk it off. It's a disappointed predator arm right there. <laughs> so that rock is likely um, completely recrystallized into some kind of clay like substance. We don't really care for that all too much. Are there any plans to go close enough to the atoll and get swarmed by the birds? I don't <laughs> know. Uh, no and no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we don't aim to. Good. We don't aim to. Right. Yeah. yeah. Bother the birds, uh, but we won't get close enough on this expedition, likely. Yeah. To. Um, to worry about that. The only reason why we dove at Johnson Atoll last year um, was due to weather. Um, but otherwise, we really don't spend too much time around the atoll because it's been very well uh, dove on and historically. Hmm. This yeah. looks pretty angular. I feel like the stuff. There's pillows here. Yeah, so whenever anything is stable, we can land anywhere and grab one of these. Uh, this is a nice talus field. If that's possible, of course. Yeah, let's just get, we'll get sorted out here. Yep. I feel like the birds have found us, um, especially yesterday. I think that was the most, we, ha we have a lot of boobies that are kind of, uh, have been following the ship ever since we yep. left um, Honolulu. Uh, but yesterday there were a whole lot of them, or at least I should say more than usual, that were kind of hanging out on the, uh, uh, around the ship, so. But nothing like what I You're heard about a few years ago. Right Have we discovered any creatures never documented before? Have we seen anything scary? Uh, yeah, we do find creatures that have not been documented, right, Steve? 
Yeah, all the time. All the time. It takes a, a, a while to get those types of things, uh, those types of animals researched. And uh, so oftentimes the, the, the results of those works aren't published until years later. Um, um, Nick, yes. you, want, you want something from the talus here? This is probably the last loose stuff for a while. Um, yeah. Um, it's, yeah. OK. Um, I'm going to drop down to here. See if we can get something. Yeah, see if we can poke around. Okay. Poke around with a stick or a heart. <laughs> um, how's that looking? That one? Cool. Mm -hmm. Have we seen anything scary? Um, on this cruise, in my opinion, I don't think we've seen anything scary. Oh. That field of sediment was kind of scary. Uh, yeah, terrifying. There was no rocks at all. I liked that so field of sediment. Whistle? You know why? Yeah. Okay. Because there was fish. There were fishies. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely some rocks. In previous cruises, we have seen vampire squid which some people might consider to be a little creepy looking. I think they're really, really, really cool. Uh, but a few dives ago, we saw a few, um, excuse me, Dumbo octopus, octopuses. One of them was quite large. It's, uh, kind of an oval shape, but um, let's give it a shot. Okay. Yeah. Small enough, you can collect Start our bio box? Yes. One of the forward two. Oh, I'm 15. sorry, forward one box? Yeah. No, no, starboard box, but one of the forward two oh, gotcha. uh, on okay. the uh, On the inboard side, side yeah. the small ones. This is 118. 118? Yes. Rather 118. And somebody is wondering, has anything ever attacked the ROV? Yeah, there's a Humboldt squid went after the arm. Really? I think so. OMG. I don't think, they're not friendly. <laughs> well, I think the scientists do a good job of attacking the ROV when the samples come up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Swarms of them. We definitely have sharks who investigate. Oh yeah, yeah. try and do like a little chomp on the tether. Yeah. Or just curious about the mm. electrical. Pulses coming off of the vehicle. Bravo. Thank you. And B. <laughs> B Bravo. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Good one. That was totally. On fire over here. Totally Smug. inadvertent. Uh, we do, are we doing bad jokes? Yes, I, always. I, that, that was not intended like, to be oh, a joke. I'm here. Hold on to one for you, Steve. Reporting to duty. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, why are corals stressed out? Oh no. Oh yes. <laughs> Why indeed? Warming ocean temperatures? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's a lot of really yeah. Ocean yeah. Yeah. Y you're not wrong. It's because of current events. Oh. <laughs> yes. Gosh. Uh, I could use more of this. <laughs> Nick, what else you got? You're welcome, Steve. Yeah. That's it. That's it. I just been chewing on that for the last 24 hours. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. He couldn't sleep last night. He was so excited to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Want to make sure everybody's awake. <laughs> Your work here is done. Yeah. <laughs> Trip. My ultimate goal to break Steve at least once during the cruise. <laughs> yeah, somebody's bringing up the sperm whale investigation. Um, yeah, so a That's few years true. ago there was a sperm whale that came really, really close to the ROV as it was making its descent, or was it coming back up? I don't. It was in blue water. We were, yeah, we were conducting transects in blue water, so we were kind of moving up and down okay. vertically. Yeah, so there was a sperm whale that got real close and personal, and it was kind of circling the ROV for about 20 minutes, just checking things out. So, I mean, definitely not an attack, but still really, really awesome to see that. Do you want an actual Keep shark chomp the uh, 
Whittle Oceanographic Institution have a video of one of their um, autonomous vehicles getting chomped on by a shark. The oh, video is wow. incredible. Really? Yeah, it was a few years ago. It's just like you can see the shark coming towards it. <laughs> you just see the mouth open and suddenly the vehicle. What AUV do they have that has a camera on it? Um, let me see. AUV with a camera? Century, maybe? Oh, Sentry sometimes has like the downward looking camera. It wasn't right. Sentry. It was, um. Uh, the hybrid ones? Oh, it was a shark cam. <laughs> it was what? It was an AUV that was specifically designed to study sharks. Oh, cool. Okay. That no, but cool. that's not. Yeah, I think that was what. <laughs> <laughs> that's rad, though. I love that. Yeah. Someone said if we see Godzilla, don't wake it up or try to take a sample. <laughs> Noted. Yeah, it's called the Remus Shark Cam. Wow, yeah. Cool. Full chomp. Yeah. Yeah. If you search for Remus Shark Cam, it is. Uh, the photos are quite, or the video is quite impressive. Definitely, uh, we've seen a lot of sharks. Um, particularly when we do shallower dives, we six, six gill sharks deeper. Sometimes they come straight for the vehicle, mostly just to check it out. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. They like to live at like 2,000 meters, right? They're like very solitary and yeah, quiet about things. Yeah. And more commonly, less than 1,200 meters, but yeah, the, I mean, most of the places I've seen them have been associated with. Uh, the fringes of islands or atolls, you know, okay. areas of higher productivity. Uh, science, anything else that we want to do here um, before we uh, start going up slope? I think we're good. It's okay. So wh what, is, what is your plan? You want to go towards three or can we uh, lateral across kind of yeah, that up, was up slope towards three? Yeah, if you still like to do that, we can just, um, yeah, head directly west. Well, ma maintaining a little bit of upslope, uh, yeah, uh, much better. Okay. Directly west north. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll do two eight zero. Directly. Two eight zero. Yeah. Okay. Just give me one sec. I wish I could just change we'll the waypoints. Probably end up coming down slope like a little bit. Tweak <laughs> them. Stay in contact. Live. Yeah. Okay. To put on a move. Uh, yeah, sure. Bridge now. Uh, five zero meters. Two eight zero. Starting to see uh, more density so in I'm these gonna, large boulders. Yeah, I'm going to be coming down probably but, to stay uh, in contact with the slope. But they're not you can very just cohesive. Me I go. Um, okay. Which is kind of strange to think about as far as their eruption or the event that caused their formation. Mm -hmm. It does look really, really angular you know, uh -huh, some of these pillows. Yeah. Oh, okay. The AUV that got bitten, that was not an AUV to study sharks, was actually from Mbari. It was in 2015, or 2013. Okay. Uh, it was the Tethys vehicle. Tethys? AUV. Tethys, yeah. yeah okay. um, and apparently it was able to finish the mission that it was on, but uh, had quite a significant bite in it. Wow. Wow. Oh, actually that's funny. The paper... There was actually a paper written about it. <laughs> um, and it was one of the co-authors was um, Jordan Stanway, who's part of a, a um, who actually comes out with the Mesobot team. Okay. Um, now, he's coming out later this year. That's funny. Small world. So 280 is a slightly upslope trending sort of? Yep, towards waypoint three. Yeah. So we're gonna lateral with a slight upslope. If it pleases ROV. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if it doth not please ROV. <laughs> I'm pleased. Well, our humble <laughs> servant will change the course. <laughs>
um, Steve, have we seen any coral yet this watch? Yep, we saw a sea pen. Uh, I've been seeing some. Whoa. Oh. Okay. Um, Can you start moving the ship yep. down slope to the south? Yep. Can you start coming up on the winch, Bridge please? Enough. About 20 meters a minute. That's, okay. that's, that's both cameras. Uh, can we uh, Point three. hold here and move the ship uh, 150? At point 0.3? At uh, zero point 0.3. And you're coming up at five zero, uh, five zero meters, uh, 150 at zero point 0.3 knots. Okay, can we get, um, let's get uh, somebody to go get Trevor? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go take a look. And can you switch to uh, whatever the other mode is? For, I never know the names of them. Winch tension looks good. So we want to go to transponder mode. Yeah. Not. Let's see what we've got here. Nope. Let me get a little thing here. So we're at 2,500 meters. So we want ISS four. What's that? Okay. I'm not finding this one. Move is started. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, I and think she's going to keep going with that move, right? That's a continuous move. Uh, I'm gonna. I, I'll, I'll call it back in. Okay, yeah. sounds good. So four. Okay. I think this is how this works. Nice job, Sam. Let's make sure that's working. We had Atalanta was moving. Whoops. Uh. Okay. Thanks. Okay, how are we looking here? We have Atalanta moving. Okay, we have Herc, we have Atalanta. Okay, Great. what do we got for depth, for delta depth there? Uh, how do I determine that? Uh, I think you'll get it on the Sonardyne page. Oh, right, right. meters perfect great we probably don't even have any tangly things happening in the tether okay cool um and we have somebody going to get trev S yeah steve's grabbing okay. uh trevor and tj okay uh and dwight okay awesome uh
try slowing down to 17. Okay. Bridge nav. Uh, we've lost uh, power to the vehicle, so we're going to continue, if we can track a line, um, 0 0.3 knots on the, uh, actually, stand standby bridge. Uh, so, if possible, let's just keep going like this for a while, because um, I don't want Herc to have a chance to, I want Herc to have sort of like constant um, movement on it to keep it from floating. Um, and once I get a sense for how fast it's floating up, maybe we can make a change, or okay. if Trevor or Rennie says differently. Yep. But let's just... If the ship can actually make this move without getting into too much wobbliness, let's keep doing it. Okay, sounds good. Bridge now. Yeah, let's continue to track a, um, a line at 0 0.3 knots um, on this uh, on this bearing 150. Um, yeah, as soon as somebody says otherwise, yeah, Roger. we can start going ahead yeah. or basically yeah once we're over the top in of the, controlled right now yeah okay I mean everything looks like it's going really well here so yeah um, okay yeah that's Yeah. Um, data, if you want to make a note, uh, I'm sure you're making notes already, but that vehicles have lost power. Targets here. Okay, for the rest of the band and the folks at home, um, we're obviously starting a recovery here, um, so you won't be. Uh, You'll be seeing uh, feeds from the, the deck now, back deck Nautilus. Um, and we will keep you posted on our next uh, next steps. So but you'll hear uh, you'll hear us mostly off comms at this uh, at this point as we, we troubleshoot. Like
website for our online viewers. We are troubleshooting the situation. Uh, just stand by. We're working on it to see if we can get power back to the vehicles. But we're still here. Just give us a moment to work things out. <laughs> 